Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. Some of the things that he was explaining was just so simple, but it was truth that just hit right home. He's changed my life. He's changed my walk. I have a hunger for God now that I've never had before. And this is just the beginning. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. I'm Andrew Womack, and today I'm continuing to share with you a teaching that I started this last Monday talking about effortless change. That sounds too good to be true, but I'm, t I'm promising you that's what the Word of God teaches. I've written a book on this, and this is one of our most requested teachings. I've had literally hundreds of people come up and say that this transformed the way that they were relating to God. Most people spend a lot of time begging and pleading with God to change, or they will sit there and blame other people and say it's the color of their skin, it's their gender, it's their lack of education, it's all of these things. They will blame other things and say, that's why I can't change. I'm trapped in this situation. Sometimes they'll even go as far as to blame God and say, God just doesn't want me to prosper. In a sense, that's what Adam did, you know, when the Lord said, who told you that you were naked? He says, it's that woman that you gave me. He pushed the blame for his disobedience off on his mate and then ultimately tried to blame God, saying, God, you're the one that created her. You're the one that gave her to me. It's your fault. And there's people that will either sit there and say, well, I just can't change because I'm in this body. I'm, you know, uh, uh, have these limitations. I have this, I'm not one of these beautiful people. I don't have the same education. And we look at other things and just say that change can happen. Or if a person is determined to change, they just try and do it in a worldly way. They try and do it through their own effort instead of doing the system that God ordained. This is what I've been talking about. And yesterday I was taking this parable out of Mark chapter 4, where Jesus taught about the Word of God being like a seed. Did you know that everything in this world operates off of this principle of seed, time, and harvest? Every living thing, the plants, the animals, you and me, all came from a seed. That's how this world operates. There isn't life without seeds. Seeds are how this whole world system functions, and likewise in the kingdom of God. The whole kingdom of God is based on the Word of God being like a seed, and it's got to be planted in your heart. You know, we would think a person is absolutely crazy who sat there and just prayed for a child but never had a relationship with a man. There was only one virgin birth, and you aren't going to be the second one. You have to have a seed planted in your womb for you to be able to conceive and bring forth a child. And in the natural, see, we understand that. But when it comes to spiritual things, there are people who are praying to have fruit, praying for change, praying for God's will to come to pass in their life, and yet they aren't planting the seed of God's Word. I've had people come to me before and say, you know, I'm praying for healing. And I say, so what scripture are you standing on? What scripture have you put in your heart that is going to bring forth healing? And I've had people say something like, well, doesn't it say someplace? I can't remember if it's the Old Testament or the New Testament, but someplace in there, isn't it something about by his stripes we're healed? They couldn't find it. They don't even know if it's old or new covenant, but someplace in there, doesn't it say that by his stripes we're healed? You know, you have to have a little more intimacy with the Word of God than that. That's like a woman just saying, well, is standing close to a man enough? Is just having him smile at me enough to get me pregnant? <laughs> you know, I'm not going to teach on these things here on television. Hopefully you understand what I'm talking about. You have to have a little closer relationship with a man than just standing across the room and having him smile at you for you to get pregnant. You have to have a seed planted. And likewise, in the kingdom of God, God set up this, this kingdom, the spiritual kingdom, that you have to take the seed of God's Word and plant it in your heart. 
That's the point that I was making at the end of yesterday's program in Mark chapter 4, verse 26. So is the kingdom of God as if a man should plant seed in the ground. The seed is the Word of God. The ground is your heart. The seed doesn't release any power. It doesn't activate anything. Nothing works until it gets in the ground. As long as it's in this book, and as long as you have a book just sitting on your shelf, and maybe even you could put it in your head and memorize some of the facts, but if it doesn't get in your heart, it doesn't release its life. And there are people watching this program right now that you desire the things of God. You would love to have joy and peace and your marriage work, and you would love to see prosperity, and you would love to see healing, and you desire the things of God, and you pray for it. You may be pursuing it and desiring it, but have you taken the seeds from God's Word that produce those things and sown them in your heart? And I would dare to say that the majority of people watching this program haven't really done it. And again, you might be able to intellectually say, well, doesn't the Bible say somewhere that by his stripes we're healed? But you've got to have more interaction, more intimacy, more intercourse with the Word of God than just uh, some kind of a vague acquaintance, having heard somebody else say it. It needs to become a revelation to you. You know, I don't memorize the Word of God. There was a time back before I had this experience with the Lord in 1968 where God revealed Himself to me. Now, I was born again when I was eight years old, but when I was 18 in 1968 is when the Lord really revealed Himself to me. And I mean, th everything changed. Prior to that time, I memorized Scripture. And I could quote John 3, 16 in certain scriptures, but it had never gone into my heart. After this encounter, the Word just came alive to me. And now I can quote literally hundreds, probably thousands of scriptures. And the vast majority of them, I can give you the address, where it's found, chapter and verse. And yet I never sit down and memorize it. What I do is I'll, I'll study the Word and read, and when God speaks something to me, Man, I'll take it. I'll put it in my heart, and I'll hide it, and it'll start growing. And, and now, when I quote Scripture, it's because it's in my heart. It's not in my head. It's not something I'm trying to remember. It's a part of me. And the Word of God has literally transformed my life. And there are people watching this program that you desire some of the things that maybe you've seen in me, I've seen my son raised from the dead. I've seen blind eyes open, deaf ears open. I've seen God provide financially. I've had God speak to me, give me direction. I've seen other people's life change. You might desire some of those things in your life, but have you taken the Word of God and planted it like a seed in your heart? And if you aren't experiencing the goodness that God has for you, I can guarantee you somewhere down the line, you have not planted God's Word in your heart or you've allowed Satan to steal it. Because the very next thing that it says, it says you take this seed, you put it in the ground, and then in verse 27, it says you should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. You know what this is describing? You can't just put the seed in the ground and then the next morning go dig it up to see is it working. No, you have to put it in the ground, and there has to be faith that that seed has a miracle in it. And when you put that seed in the ground and leave it there, something is happening. You can't see it. It's below the ground. You can't see it, but by faith, you just believe that that seed is releasing its power. And then when you see a little sprout come up above the ground, then you have some physical evidence. But you have to just leave it there until you let it grow, until it's full growth, and until it produces all of the fruit. See, in the spiritual realm, there's people that will take the Word of God, and you might be inspired by my television program or what somebody else says, and for a day or so, you'll take the Word and you'll pray and ask God and something will be revealed unto you and you'll plant it in your heart. But then the next day, Satan is going to come to steal away the Word that's been sown in your heart. And are you going to stand on the revelation that God gave you or are you going to let the criticism of other people, circumstances, negative things, steal away that Word that's in your heart? 
SEE, IF YOU DO THAT, IT'S JUST LIKE A PERSON WHO PUTS A SEED IN THE GROUND, BUT THEN THE NEXT DAY YOU DIG IT UP TO SEE, DID IT WORK? NO, IT'LL, it'll NEVER RELEASE ITS POWER. IT'LL NEVER GERMINATE DOING THAT. YOU GOT TO LEAVE IT THERE. AND I DON'T FULLY UNDERSTAND EVERYTHING, RIGHT? HERE IT EVEN SAYS THAT THE SEED SHOULD SPRING AND GROWETH UP. HE KNOWETH NOT HOW. MAN, THIS IS ONE OF THE MOST EXCITING THINGS ABOUT THIS IS THAT I DON'T FULLY UNDERSTAND THIS. I CAN'T WRAP MY BRAIN AROUND HOW JUST STUDYING THE WORD FROM YOUR HEART, NOT JUST WITH YOUR HEAD, BUT WITH YOUR HEART, YOU'RE STUDYING THE WORD AND YOU'RE ASKING GOD TO SPEAK TO YOU AND YOU JUST TAKE THESE TRUTHS THAT HE SHOWS YOU, YOU PUT THEM IN YOUR HEART AND IT JUST WORKS. I DON'T FULLY UNDERSTAND IT. I'M EXPLAINING IT THE BEST WAY THAT I CAN TO YOU. BUT I DON'T HAVE THE WORDS THAT ARE ADEQUATE. DID YOU KNOW, AGAIN, YOU COULD TAKE ALL OF THE CUMULATIVE RESOURCES OF MEN, THEIR BRAIN POWER, THEIR FINANCES, ALL OF THEIR TECHNOLOGY, AND THEY CAN PRODUCE SOMETHING THAT LOOKS LIKE A SEED, MAY HAVE THE EXACT SAME WEIGHT AS A SEED. IT MIGHT, uh, YOU KNOW, HAVE THE SAME, uh, uh, I DON'T KNOW, TASTE AS A SEED OR WHATEVER. BUT IF IT'S A MAN-MADE SEED, IT WON'T GENERATE THAT POWER. THEY, WITH ALL OF OUR WISDOM, THE CUMULATIVE WISDOM OF MANKIND, THEY CAN PRODUCE SOMETHING THAT LOOKS LIKE IT, THAT HAS THE SAME WEIGHT, TASTES LIKE IT, FEELS LIKE IT, BUT IT DOESN'T HAVE THAT MIRACLE ON THE INSIDE. THE POINT I'M MAKING IS WE DON'T FULLY UNDERSTAND A SEED. YOU CAN MAKE SOMETHING THAT IMITATES IT, LOOKS LIKE IT, BUT A MAN-MADE SEED WILL NOT RELEASE ITS POWER. IT WON'T PRODUCE. YOU COULD TAKE A SEED THAT LOOKS JUST LIKE AN APPLE SEED, BUT IF YOU PLANT A MAN-MADE APPLE SEED, IT WON'T PRODUCE AN APPLE TREE AND APPLES. WE DON'T FULLY UNDERSTAND IT, BUT DOES THAT KEEP US FROM USING IT? NO. You, EVERY ONE OF US, PROBABLY EVERY PERSON WATCHING THIS PROGRAM HAS TAKEN A SEED OF SOMETHING AND HAS PUT IT IN THE GROUND, AND EVEN THOUGH YOU DON'T UNDERSTAND IT, WE CAN'T DUPLICATE IT. WE CAN'T MAKE A MAN-MADE SEED AND YET THAT DOESN'T KEEP US FROM USING IT. YOU CAN STILL BENEFIT FROM IT. AND YOU CAN PLANT A SEED, AND IF YOU GIVE IT TIME AND DO ALL THESE THINGS, IT'LL JUST WORK. YOU DON'T KNOW HOW. BUT NOTICE IT SAYS THAT YOU SHOULD SLEEP AND RISE NIGHT AND DAY, AND THE SEED SHOULD SPRING AND GROW UP. HE KNOWETH NOT HOW. IN OTHER WORDS, THIS IS IMPLYING THAT THERE'S TIME. YOU HAVE TO GIVE IT TIME. AND THIS IS ONE OF THE GREATEST ENEMIES OF CHANGE is that we won't change, but we want it right now. There is no such thing as patience in most people. Our society is getting to where, man, we are doing everything. There's instant everything. We have instant results. I remember when the Internet first came out, people would sit there and wait long periods of time for something to connect because, you know, they didn't have anything to compare it to, but they're impatient. And now, I mean, if things don't work instantly, we get upset. We're used to instant food through drive throughs and carry out and instant potatoes and, in, you know, microwave everything. And it's just the way that it is in our natural world. But in the kingdom of God, you can't microwave growth and change. THERE'S JUST A PERIOD OF TIME. YOU HAVE TO SLEEP AND RISE NIGHT AND DAY. YOU HAVE TO GIVE THE SEED TIME TO WORK. AND THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT THEIR LIFE IS JUST TOO BUSY AND THEY AREN'T GOING TO GIVE IT TIME. AND I REALLY DON'T HAVE A GOOD ANSWER FOR THAT. THERE IS NO WAY TO SHORTCUT THIS. NOW, YOU CAN DO A FEW THINGS. LIKE ONE OF THE REASONS WE STARTED OUR Caris BIBLE COLLEGE IS BECAUSE I LEARNED A LOT OF THINGS THROUGH HARD KNOCKS, THROUGH TRIAL AND ERROR. I DIDN'T DO IT THE RIGHT WAY. AND SO I CAN TAKE THE THINGS THAT GOD HAS TAUGHT ME AND I CAN SHARE THEM WITH OTHER PEOPLE AND THEY CAN AVOID MAKING MY MISTAKES AND I BELIEVE IT'LL HELP SPEED THINGS UP. IT DOESN'T HAVE TO TAKE THEM 50 YEARS TO GROW TO A PLACE THAT IT'S TAKEN ME 50 YEARS TO GROW TO. AND SO WE BRING IN THESE OTHER INSTRUCTORS AND WE CAN HELP, BUT THERE STILL IS THE PERIOD OF TIME I TELL OUR STUDENTS ALL OF THE TIME THAT IF YOU COME TO Caris BIBLE COLLEGE FOR TWO YEARS, YOU'RE GOING TO GAIN A TREMENDOUS AMOUNT OF KNOWLEDGE. IT'S GOING TO HELP YOU. IT'S GOING TO CATAPULT YOU IN THE DIRECTION THAT YOU WANT TO GO. BUT I'VE ALSO TOLD OUR STUDENTS, I SAID, YOU ARE NOT GOING TO BE TOTALLY MATURE BY THE TIME YOU LEAVE AFTER TWO YEARS. IT TAKES MORE THAN TWO YEARS FOR US TO GROW FROM BEING CARNAL AND TO GROW INTO BEING SPIRITUAL. NOW, YOU CAN... YOU CAN BEGIN THAT PROCESS. I'M NOT SAYING THAT YOU CAN'T SEE ANY FRUIT, BUT IT JUST... YOU AREN'T GOING TO GROW AND, 
and overcome 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years worth of carnality and wrong thinking and just turn the whole thing around in one or two years. It takes time. And I know that that's disappointing. And there's a lot of people that'll probably just say, well, I hadn't got time. Well, let me put it to you this way. What are you going to be doing for the next few years if you don't get into the Word of God and if you don't give it time and if you aren't patient and just let it stay in your heart and meditate in it, if you don't do this, what's going to happen? Well, I can tell you what won't happen, and that is that you won't get the results that God promised. The Word of God will not release its potential in your life if you don't give it time and effort. And so you may, you may be put off by the fact that it's not going to happen in the next two or three minutes, that somebody can't just wave their hand over you and solve all of your problems, that you've got to take the Word of God and start meditating in day and night that's what the Lord told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, then when? When you've meditated in it day and night, then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Everybody wants the prosperity and everybody wants the good success, but they don't want to meditate in the Word day and night. They got too many other things that they're occupied with, and it just chokes the Word of God. And so there's a lot of people that I just haven't got time. I need something right now. You know, there is a growth process, and that's what this this parable is describing that you have to sleep and rise night and day. It's implying that there's multiple nights and days. You just don't get up the next morning and see your fruit complete from planting it the night before. There's time involved. And if you're in a situation where, say, for instance, you're struggling uh, with a health problem and you haven't got a year or two, you've only got a week to live, a, a month to live, well, in that situation, what you're going to have to do is go to somebody else who has invested the time and the effort and they have the power of God flowing in them and you're going to have to go in and weather the storm in their house and live off of their revelation. And sad to say, to a large degree, this is the way that the body of Christ functions. They depend upon people that are full-time ministers, people that are professionals, the pastor of the church, somebody who makes their living. It's a, They pay people to get into the Word for them, and then when they get into trouble, they just run, and they want you to wave your hand over them and get them healed or delivered or to see the prosperity come. And praise God, the Lord loves you so much that He does use people and He does help you when you haven't had time to get into the Word and the Word isn't producing in your life. You can run and get a miracle uh, through someone else. In a sense, it's like you have a surrogate birth. You have somebody else carry the seed and then bring the delivery and then you claim the child. And God will do things like that, but that was never intended to be the normal way of receiving from God. That's just a stopgap measure. If you're in a crisis situation and if you haven't put the time and effort into the Word of God, then yes, go to someone else who has and get their agreement and let them pray for you and let God flow through them and get your miracle to you that way. Yes, God does that, but that is never God's best. That's only temporary until you get into the Word of God, until you start learning how to conceive your own miracle and let the Word of God produce. The sad fact is that even though there are people that God uses, and God has used me like that, I've been able to release healing into people that never would have gotten it on their own because the Word of God wasn't living on the inside of them. And so God used me, and I praise God for that. And I'm not saying I won't do that again, but I'm saying that that's not the system that God set up. God intended you to be able to receive directly from Him. Now, if you're in a crisis situation and you just aren't there, don't be so proud or arrogant that you won't humble yourself and go to somebody else and ask for help. But what I'm saying is don't be so dependent upon someone else that you only depend upon the professionals to believe for you and to help you, and you never take responsibility for yourself. If you need help, go get help. 
Let someone else pray for you. We've got people standing by at our phones right now, and we see miracles happen every single day. We've seen people raised from the dead through our phone ministry. And so you can call and you can get prayer, and we're glad to do that. But what I'm trying to say is that God wants you to learn these principles, and He wants you to take the Word of God as a seed, plant it in your heart, give it time, and that seed will spring and grow up and it'll bring forth fruit. And this is the way that God has ordained change in your life. Not through just begging for it, pleading for it, asking for it, desiring it, running to other people and having them pray for you and help you. God wants you to take the Word of God like a seed and sow it in your heart. And if you'll do that and meditate therein day and night, Joshua 1, 8, then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. I know that every one of you want to be prosperous. You want to have success. But the way it happens is through taking the Word of God like a seed and planting it in your heart, the ground, leaving it there, just sleep and rise night and day. Give it time to work. And you don't have to understand everything. Just take it by faith. Take these scriptures by faith that he says, if you do this and leave it there, it would just automatically begin to start bringing change to you. Change will come effortlessly if you approach it God's way, where you just take the Word and meditate in it and let it change you. Man, that's powerful. You know, this is something that I have lived by for over 50-something years. You know, during this pandemic, just over this last weekend, I bet you I've spent... I'm, I'm just guessing I didn't sit down and count, but at least four or five hours a day studying the Word. Some days I'll spend 10 hours a day studying the Word. And I've been doing this for 53 years. And I don't understand it. I can't even tell you specifics about things that God speaks to me every day, but just take this Word and you just let it flow through you. And it just changes the way you think. And then as you think in your heart, that's the way that it is, Proverbs 23, 7. You get transformed by the renewing of your mind, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And I still don't completely understand it, but I spend a lot of time just meditating in the Word, studying the Word. I've read all of these things hundreds of times. I've read through the Bible hundreds of times, and I'm still studying it today. I'm still meditating in the Word today. If I have any time off, I've got a broadcast tonight that we do. And if I have any time this afternoon, I guarantee you, I'll take some time and I'll sit here and just study the Word. I'm just constantly taking the Word. And somebody says, well, haven't you read it by now? Yes, but God's Word isn't like any other book. There's levels to it. There's depth to it. I've read scriptures that I've read hundreds of times and seen brand new things out of it. God speaks things uh, through scriptures that I've read hundreds of times that I've never seen before. You can never plumb the depths of God's Word. I'm as hungry for God's Word today as I ever have been, and it's working, and I'm telling you, this is how God has affected change in my life. I've got this book that will explain all of this in a lot more detail. I encourage you to get it. It'll be a blessing to you. I've also got it in Spanish. I've got study guides that go with it. I've also got DVDs and CDs. If you'll listen, our announcer will give you all of the different ways that you can receive this material. I encourage you to get it. I promise you, it'll change your life. So get this book and then join me again tomorrow as we continue the gospel truth. Andrew's entire series, Effortless Change, is available as a book in either English or Spanish, or as a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. You can also get this teaching as a companion study guide in English or Spanish. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Go to awmi.net to see all the ways you can get this teaching. Andrew's book, Effortless Change, is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. 
But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this book to you free of charge. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or you can call our helpline at 719-635-1111. Our helpline is open Monday through Friday, 24 hours a day, and Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. suspected of following the religious sect known as Christianity will be thrown to the lions. Welcome to the AWM Minute, a small glimpse on how the friends and partners of Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College are raising up disciples who are bringing God's kingdom into every sphere of society, disciples like Colin and April Carr. After graduating Karis in 2008, God told Colin to leave the security of his job and start his own real estate company just months after the market crashed. We had just had our first child and there were more reasons than you can possibly imagine of why it was not the right time to start a new company. However, we knew for a fact that God was telling us to do it and we knew for a fact that what the Lord told us to do was the safest place that we could possibly be. By seeking first God's kingdom, the cars saw their business grow supernaturally, and today, their one small startup now has offices in over 40 states. To see their full financial breakthrough story, visit awmi.net today. You know, the Lord has given me a huge vision, and we've been blessed up to this point, but I've still got so much that God's leading me to do. I'm believing God for 10,000 new partners. We've already got over $120 million worth of buildings in just the last nine years, but I've got at least $100 million worth, maybe $200 million worth of buildings still in my heart for our students, for an activity center. We've got a new student housing that we've got a preliminary drawing of that is showing you a little idea of what it would look like. This one would house about 120 people. Our others are gonna be smaller with maybe somewhere around 40 people per dorm, but we need this student housing and we need people to become partners. I'm believing for 10,000 new partners, I would ask you to pray about it. And if the Lord says so, join with us and help us change people's lives through Karis Bible College.